Hello and a warm welcome back for some more action from the head coach with me, Daniel. It's season four, episode six, and today we play our last game of the Vanarama National League season before playing our playoff semi-final. That's right, as you can see from the league table in the bottom left of the screen, we have guaranteed a third place finish, which is an absolute miracle based on the last couple of the years. We snuck seventh from both of the last two seasons, and this year we've been fairly confident and solid in the playoffs throughout the second half of the season. And we've hopefully got a chance to get to the Football League. And that would normally be a big story. But if you look who's won the title, Geisley are going up to the Football League. They haven't really signed anyone from last year. In second place was Macclesfield. They're the team who stayed up on the last day of the season last year. And Dorwich Hamlet, who are newly promoted to the division in fourth. So it's been an absolutely crazy division this year, with all of the big guns sitting in the lower end of the playoffs or mid-table. And hopefully we can be the one from them playoff teams to take advantage of it. But we've got the small matter of Tranmere on the last day of the season to get through first, so let's have a quick look at the results since you were last with me. You came and joined me for that Stockport and Geisley doubleheader last time where we had that ridiculous 3-0 draw against the eventual champions. In the games we've played since then, we lost at York, who were also in the playoff spaces 3-1. Newell got a late consolation, but we were never going to win that game. We then played at home to second place Macclesfield and we beat them 3-0 with Dave Owen getting a hat-trick. It's a shame he's been so inconsistent because on the days he's been on form he's been brilliant. But Chelmsford then held us to a one-all draw in the following game. Manny Parry again with a header from a corner. Before Xavier and Parry again in a two-all draw at home to Maidstone. Before yet another draw, a third on the bounce at home to Grimsby. Where they managed to get the equaliser in the first minute of stoppage time. Before our most recent game against AFC Fylde at home. Getting revenge for our FA Trophy defeat with a 2-0 win at home. Parry, three in four games for him. Not bad for a centre-half. And Jonah Iunga. Getting back to scoring ways on his way back from injury. And that sends us into this Tranmere game. Five without defeat, despite only winning two of those games. But let's get straight into the first one. We're going to do very quick highlights. So you might see a few skips in between certain minutes of play. We'll still see all the action as always. But we want to put a real focus on our semi-final in the playoffs. So our lineup for today, we've got Scott Brown in goal. Jordan Thomas in for Pike at right back, who's been in awful form, alongside Parry, Casey and Butroid as normal. Xavier, Brundle, Ashby and Treacher. Owen and a younger up front. Owen's hit and miss, but we haven't got anything else to choose from because George Null's still injured from that game, where Owen got his hat-trick a few weeks back. Now let's get straight into it. There's no hanging about here. Tranmere are playing with a 4-4-2, so hopefully that gives us a chance. We're going to encourage the boys, and we're going to get straight into the game. Tranmere to kick off. Hopefully they won't be able to put many past us. We had this last season. Oh, it was this season two, I think, where we went to Ebbsfleet and lost 4-0 before the playoffs. And it just ruined everything. Last season, we just struggled against Eastley. It was an end-to-end -end game. And I just pray that whoever we play in this semi-final doesn't play a 4-3-3. Which, if we play against a 4-4-2, I have no doubt we've got a chance to get into the Football League. The young players we've got on loan have developed well this year. And to be fair, it's the first season out of either club at four seasons that our director of football has worked on the squad during the season. Season. We've improved so much over the Christmas period. Bringing in loan signings like Xavier, like Owen, have made such a difference to us. George Null as a permanent signing was one. And obviously we've got the two fullbacks playing today who both came in later on in the season. So he has done some good work for us this year and we do have to start to credit him for that. And our chairman keeps giving him new contracts so we've got to learn to get on well with him. The one thing I would say in the last week is we were almost managing this game at a new club. Bradford City offered us an interview. We became heavy favourites for the job. We also had an interview at Zaragoza in Spain. Unfortunately, I didn't get offered the job afterwards, so we have to make do with Dover for now. If we can take them into the Football League, I'm expecting a big jogger in the summer. But as it stands, our playoff record isn't the best, and I won't get my hopes up too early. But thankfully, they've had a shot from 25 yards, and it's a long way wide. We're halfway through the first half. We've got a corner. It's one of the first attacks we've seen. Treacher on the edge of the box as the ball's played out to the edge. But unfortunately, he's put it wide and it remains nil-nil. And Tranmere straight away have an attack from a set piece just inside our half. They're playing it around in the middle nicely here. Tilly's looked a bit of a danger man so far, but thankfully he keeps shooting from distant. As I say, that Butroid wins it back for him and goes long, but there's no one there and they've got time to mop up and play it away. And they're bringing it down the left wing now. Are they going to cause some trouble for us? Neither team's really look like scoring yet. Masked by the fact they haven't had a shot on target yet, neither have we. So 0-0 is very much a fair result so far. And that's why we've been talking about other things, because not much has been happening here. And as I say that, they get in behind and they're about to go 1-0 up with Tilly, are they? They're not because Brown saves it, but the rebound's in. 
Nelson scores the goal. Tilly the danger man forced the initial save. And Nelson just gets to tap in the rebound. We're 1-0 down. And it's the usual service before the playoffs. We just lose our form. We lose focus on the last day of the season. And then we go into the playoffs without confidence. We're coming straight back with Owen. But he's lost it in the middle. And now they're bringing it forward on the right again with Tilly. He's gone down the line to Collins. Puts the ball across. And Thomas heads away well. Owen can turn. He's found Ashby. But we just don't look lively up front at all. A younger brings it down though. He's got three on one. But he finds Dave Owen. Who tries to shoot ridiculously from 30 yards. And it hits the man who was marking him tightly. But they've given it away again. Butroy goes long. A younger's in one on one. Finds Owen in the box. Dave Owen had the shot, but it's been tipped wide by the keeper. It was a poor effort in truth, and we've spoken a few times about him not being able to finish, which is my big bugbear, but I haven't got anyone better. Connor Evans has come in a few times. I think he's only scored about six goals in 25-odd appearances. He might have scored a couple more than that, but not many. He's definitely below one in three, which doesn't really help us. As Owen gets it on the edge again, and his shot goes not only over the bar, but almost over the stand as well. And Tranmere's ground's one of the biggest in the conference, so that's that's quite some achievement. But we are getting a lot of the running here. Treacher on the left loses out this time. And as I say that, they're bringing it away on the counter-attack again. Every time I say we look good, they bring it on the counter-attack. And what happened there? It was a nice deflection of Ashby. And it looks like it's gone out for a corner when there was no danger at all. They've got the corner to come in. It is Tilly again. Looks like the key man. Collins with the header. Completely unmarked at the near post. But it's saved. But again, they've got time and space on the edge of the box. Tilly's got acres in the area on the right. Cuts it back to the edge, but thankfully it's a poor touch. And the ball in straight to Scott Brown. They've got a set piece just on the stroke of half time. Hopefully we can keep it at one. <laughs> Lo and behold, it's gone in the bottom corner. It was a really good header, to be fair. But he's had more time and space than he should have to win a free header six yards out. But no chance for Scott Brown. It's in the bottom corner. And on the stroke of half time, we're 2-0 down. And it looks like we could be getting a bit of Ebb's Fleet Syndrome, as we were talking about earlier. We're going to tell them it was disappointing and get straight into the second half. OK, we've had our moan at the break. We kick off in the second half and hopefully we can do something to get back into the game. We can't keep going into the playoffs in poor form. That's why we've lost the quarterfinals every year. Thankfully, we haven't got to contend with a quarterfinal this year. But if we end up with a team like Dulwich Hamlet or Hartlepool, sorry, they'll just completely wipe the floor with us. They're better sides anyway. They're professional sides and they've got bigger budgets. And for that, we have to have high confidence for things to work. They're bringing it forward in midfield again with Tilly on the right. He's caused so much danger today. But they've just got so much time on the edge of the box. You wouldn't have thought we got the instruction on to close down more, would you? And we've got the better fitness of the two sides. But it doesn't show on the pitch. And 10 minutes into the second half, it's still 2-0 to Tranmere. We have got a corner though with Ashby. He's put the ball across the box. It's out to the edge, headed away to Xavier. It's a good effort. And it looks like the keeper's made a bit of a meal with it. He still should have held it, but he's tipped it wide. And we've got another corner which Ashby will deliver again. This time he gets it into the meat of things. He's headed away, but straight to Xavier again. And this time his shot's well wide. We're going to take Dave Owen off, who's had yet another poor game in midfield. Xavier's been atrocious, and we need to stop him shooting from there. Davis comes back in on the right. And Mitch Brundle's had a poor game, which normally means we lose. Because if he doesn't dominate the middle of the pitch, we're in a bit of trouble. Coventry comes in, but at least he hasn't been sent off or booked this time. But there's the three changes. I don't know if they'll make any difference. If we get to the 75 minutes, we'll go all out attack. We'll throw ourselves at it. We're not the sort of manager to sit on a 2-0 defeat. Brown with a big long clearance up to a, a younger. Treacher brings it down in the middle of the pitch. Ashby's got time, but he's not playing those confident long passes anymore. He's just bringing it down and playing it simple. But Ayunga's got him behind later on to Jason Davis, but he's headed straight at a keeper. And unfortunately, it's still 2-0. It's been fairly even. You can see even possession, we haven't been dominated that badly. But we've had the same amount of shots on target, clear-cut chances, and everything's the same. But we've just not been good enough. We've really struggled to defend them, and they've caused us absolute chaos on the wings. We've only just got over 10 minutes to go. They're having an attack, but while they're doing that, we'll just go all out, attack and run at the defence and see what happens. They've got a ball into the box and the header straight at Scott Brown. Don't know why I was going to call him Jason as well. There's enough Jasons on the right wing. But oh well, they've got it down with Tilly again. Coventry intercepts. Big long hoof over the top for Connor Evans. Can he make a meal of it? Of course he can make a meal of it. He puts it well wide. I didn't mean to say can he make a meal of it, but he, he lo and behold, he made it accurate. So fair play to him for that. Parry clears it long to Evans. Evans is bringing it down on the right to Jason Davis. Can he get a cross in? Evans is in there with the header. The keeper, again, it looks like he should have held it. Apparently, it was sublime by Jason Davis. I wouldn't say it was that good. He brought the ball down and crossed it. If your winger's sublime for that, then there's a lot of sublime wingers around. Butroy heads it back. 
He goes long over the top, and that is to absolutely no one and out for a goal kick for Tranmere. Here we come again then. Thomas on the right. We're certainly going all out attack now. Coventry crosses to a younger, but he's headed straight at Bexon. It looked a good chance, but unfortunately straight at the keeper. Something we've said at least four or five times today between our three strikers. And going into stoppage time, it's still 2-0 to Tranmere. And unfortunately, we're going to have to settle for a defeat on the last day of the season. You can see Dulwich have moved to within one point of us. And I would not be confident at all facing them in the semis. A younger has the shot, but it's wide. And it's all over for a 2-0 defeat. We'll tell them it was disappointing and we'll be back in a few minutes for our playoff game. We'll see who wins the quarterfinal and we'll let you know who we've got in the semis. OK, we're back for the big one now. We're playing York at home in the Vanarama National League playoff semi-final. Because we finished third in the league, we skipped the stage we always lose at. And we've got a very winnable game against the fifth place team. Let's go and have a quick look at how we did against them during the season. So we lost 3-1 away to them in the away game just a few weeks back. But in our home game earlier in the season, we got a one-all draw. So if we can do that and win on penalties, we'll be more than happy. George Null scored on both occasions. And unfortunately, after injury, he's only fit for a place on the bench today. We've also got Xavier, our right winger, who's been called up to the Under-20s World Cup. Which is a great thing for the club to show how well he's done for us. But unfortunately, it means we've lost one of our stronger creative players for this game. But other than that one on the right wing, there's no changes here. So we've got Scott Brown in goal, Thomas Parry, Casey and Butroid at the back. Jason Davis in for Xavier on the right, Treacher on the left and Ashby and Brundle in the middle. Dave Owen just about keeps his place up front with the younger, but George Null, whether he's fit or not, is sitting on the bench. I don't know what's wrong with him. Let's have a quick look. He's got sprained knee ligaments, so probably not the best thing to bring him back early from. But this is the best chance we're ever going to have to get to a playoff final and back to Wembley with Dover. So let's get into it and hope we can pull off a miracle here. York is still a professional club, don't forget, so we're still the underdogs. But we're both playing 4-4-2, so hopefully we've got a level playing field to start with. We're going to get him to prove a point. It's one of our favourite ones to give here. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to ignore my assistant manager. I'm going to say we expect a much better performance. And we'll just go on to the standard second line from the top for the press conferences. No one ever reads them anymore, surely. Let me know in the comments. Do you still read the press conferences or do you just press the second one every time? I know now in this year's game they tried to trick us all by putting the odd comment where they're the opposite way round. And you'd end up getting yourself in a bit of trouble. But it's never caused me any real danger. So second option from the top, stick to it. If you're, reading this, if you're watching this and it's your first ever time on Football Manager, just press the second option. Every press conference. Every interview, no matter what you do. Second option. We're five minutes in, not a lot happening so far. That's why we're still talking about press conferences. But Brundle has the free kick from 25 yards and he forces a save from Farman, who I think is Paul Farman, the former Lincoln keeper, who was in their squad last season to get promotion to the Football League. 16-17 was it when he went to the FA Cup quarterfinals as well. He used to go down injured all the time and he got a bit of criticism for it, but oh well. Jonah Younger on the edge, he's challenged well and York are able to bring it away now with the 4-4-2. They're just playing it in the middle, they seem to be very slow down. What is that? I don't, he's done well to keep it in the winger, but I don't know what they're doing there. Casey heads away. Unfortunately, Treacher can't get on the end of it and they're going to bring it forward again. But Treacher intercepts again and we're bringing it forward with Ashby to Brundle. Brundle to Owen, edge of the box. He's got it down the left. Can he get it? It's three men in the middle now, but he's been fouled, but he's managed to get rid of the ball beforehand. But it's a long way back to Ashby and we've got to build from scratch again. Treacher to Brundle though as we speed up the tempo. Into a younger on the edge of the box. The shot's blocked, but it's fallen to us again and the highlight continues. Brundle tries to get Davis in behind, but unfortunately it's mopped up easily back to the keeper. But it's only as far as Thomas and he knocks it down to Ashby. Long ball up to a younger, but it's gone straight through to the keeper, Farman. And we had a little bit of asserted pressure to get excited about there. But 15 minutes in, it's still nil-nil. Here we come on another attack here. Brundle to a younger. Owen over to Davis. Gets the ball across, but he's headed away. Brundle brings it forward again with Treacher into the box. But the shot's rash and it's wide. We just lack that little bit of composure in the box. And as a result, a quarter of the way through, it's still nil-nil despite our dominance. Coming up to the half hour mark and it's us with the highlight again. But Owen's lost out and now they're going to bring it forward. They haven't had a shot on target yet. And you no doubt their first one will be a goal. But it's us again with Davis. A younger up to Owen. He's into the edge of the box but shoots from distance and it's wide. We just haven't got that composure. Owen's such a good striker and an all-round player. But he can't finish and he hasn't got pace. He's got everything else in his game. And he'd be a better midfield player to be honest. But unfortunately we don't get to choose that. He's only on loan with us until the end of this season. And then Portsmouth can decide what to do with him. Presuming he's on loan from Portsmouth. Because I may have just made that club up entirely. Here's Treacher on the left with a cross to Jason Davis and again it's straight at the keeper. How many times in this episode are we going to say it's straight at the keeper? 
Really poor finishing in front of goal, and it's the only thing we're missing. But we're coming to the break. We've been absolutely brilliant, and it's nil-nil. We've said that a few times before as things have collapsed. And we started well against Eastley in last year's playoff. We were 2-0 up after six minutes, I think, and lost 4-3. So I won't get too ahead of myself just yet. But we look good going into the break. Here comes Tretcher down the left-hand side. Tries to get the long ball over the top, but Jackson intercepts. It's an awful clearance, though, to Brundle. Can he get the man in? He can't. There's no composure again. He hasn't looked up, and he's just gone for a wild effort from 25 yards. And that definitely means at the break, we're 0-0 with York City. But we've been by far the better side, and even just about had more possession. We'll give them the team talk. We'll tell them there's no pressure. Because there isn't. We're not expected to win. As I said before the game, York are the professional side. We're still the underdogs here. And we'll hope that we can take advantage in the second half of somehow having better fitness. They've played their quarter-final in the week, don't forget, as the fifth-place team. As we had to do last year, and the year before, and the year before that, where we lost at both clubs over three seasons. So they've played a midweek game. Their fitness will be lower towards the end. Thomas at right back with a ball into a younger. There's the header. Jordan Thomas, who came in for Pike a few weeks ago, with a beautiful pinpoint cross from the right. And we've gone 1-0 up with Jonah Younger, the hero again. The man at the end of Season 2 that I said he's not good enough. We've got to replace him up front. And no matter who's come and gone up front, we've got three new strikers this year. Ryan Bird's been moved on. Jonah Younger's still the key man up there. What a man he is. Davis on the edge of the box as we come forward again with a shot, which Farman saves. We got so excited at 2-0 up against Eastley last year and it all went wrong within four minutes. So we didn't have too long to celebrate and get excited. But this one, we've been ahead. We've dominated the whole game. And now York are having what I think is their first attacking highlight in the match. But Butroid intercepts. So Younger holds up brilliantly. Can we get the ball forward with Treacher? Lovely ball up. Owens in one-on-one. -on -one. Surely have a shot, son. But he's put it wide and he just can't finish. He's got everything else in his game, but he cannot get the goal. Davis wins it back. He's been brilliant on the right state. A Younger again holds it up well. Davis is in. We've got three-on-one in the middle and Treacher scores. Surely we're in the final now. We've just got to hold out. What a bit of play by the two wingers. A younger again holding up, being the pivot of the team up front there. And we're 2-0 up at home to York with just half an hour to go. And please, please, please let this be the year we get to the final. But York are coming forward now. Butroy brilliant at the back again. Ashby coming forward to Davis. You'll notice I'm talking quicker now. I'm so excited for this one. I want to take Dover to the Football League just to shut a few people up and get myself a big job for all the 14 teams that rejected me over the winter period last year. And some of them are going to be in the National League next year. So hopefully I'll be able to have a smile at them. But New York have got it on the edge. We're talking too early again. But thankfully they've put it over the bar. And I still don't think... I've had one shot on target now. But we've been completely dominant in this game. It's the best performance I can remember in a long time. But we've just got to make sure we do it for the full 94, 95 minutes now. They've got the ball in the middle. It's the first time they're having a bit of asserted pressure. They've slid it in. They've got two at the back post. Thomas with a brilliant clearance. And it's knocked on further by Davis. But it's not over yet as they come forward on the left again. They've been forced to go backwards, but they've got that man over in the middle. Can they get the ball forward? They can. Lazarus has done us again. But Casey with a great sliding tackle and a big clearance upfield towards the younger. It's headed back and the highlight's still going with York. Oakley on the edge and the shot's well, well wide. Well, we've dealt with the first bit of pressure that's come up against us. But there's a few more bits now. Brundle's won it back, but he's lost out again. They've got it on the edge. Thomas wins it back. He's been absolutely fantastic at right back. Owen to a younger. We had the man over, but he tries to shoot and gives the ball away. We're going to make a couple of subs just as they've started to get on top in the last few minutes. Owen's going to come off. We're going to bring Evans on just because we don't need to risk nil now. We want him fit for the final. It's going to be an important game for us. And I'm going to bring Coventry on for Ashby, who's had a fairly quiet game in the middle. Coventry's a little bit better defensively, so hopefully he can just shore things up as we'll go to a more disciplined formation in a minute as well. Here York come again. They're definitely getting the better of the game now, but we're 2-0 up and it's just holding on. We keep winning it back from them. A younger finds it to Evans. Evans out wide. Davis coming down the right. Can he beat his man? He can't, and he's given the ball away. He's poor, to be honest. Coventry's lost out in the air, and their front two are bringing it forward again. They've got a little bit of space here, 30 yards out. And hopefully we can just keep them back with his two banks of four. But they've got him with Wolves Beasley. And Scott Brown makes a fantastic save, the experienced keeper. And maybe that's something else we've missed this season. 
we've had this season that we've missed in previous ones, sorry. It's just having a bit of leadership at the back. But as I say that, they've pulled one back. And with 15 minutes to go, I'm going to get egg on my face again. It looks like I'm speaking too soon. We're going to be more disciplined and go to the counter-attack. As that's where we seem to be winning the ball back. I know it's defensive, but we've got to try and get to the final. I didn't do it in previous years and we lost out. And I don't know what Brundle's doing now. We're a bag of nerves at the minute. And after 65 minutes of dominance... York are getting completely on top of us. And we haven't had an attacking highlight for 15 minutes now. And <laughs> just to make things worse, Jonah Ryung has picked up an injury. And it looks like George Newell is going to have to come on after all. I haven't really got any areas I can move the formation, I don't think. I don't know if any of these left or right-hand sided players can play in the middle. Jason Davis can't. Shiloh Tracy can't really. And Treacher, no, only in the attacking role. I don't know what to do. Can any of the fullbacks play in there? Jack Senior, no. I don't know what I'm going to do at this point, to be honest. I'm completely out of ideas. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take a massive gamble here. I'm going to drop Connor Coventry into that holding midfield role as a defensive defending midfielder just to do the job. A younger we're going to drop in there so we can sub him. And we'll leave Evans up there on his own. We're not going to float crosses. We're going to whip them in. And I know this isn't the most exciting bit to see, but we always talk about the head coach, the fact that we don't do the transfers and contract. But this is the bit where we get to make a difference. We're going to put Treacher into the middle just for this. And we're going to put Senior on left midfield in front of the left back as we get things as defensive as they can possibly be. So let's confirm those changes and see if we can hang on there. It's five minutes to go. Surely we can do it. The big worry, obviously, is a younger's out for the playoff final. And I was hoping to get Newell back and have them together. But I think the fact that I'm talking about being in the playoff final is a little premature. As they bring it forward with two on three at the back. But Casey does very well to mop up to Scott Brown. Long clearance, which Brundle flicks on. Treacher wins the header to Evans. Please get a goal. Put it out of sight. Treacher into Brundle. He's through. But he hits it straight at Farman. You can probably hear me getting louder and louder and louder as this episode goes on. So I apologise if you're on headphones and you can't change the volume. I'm just getting very excited by this one. This is the closest we've been to the playoff final for a long, long time. Brundle gets the ball and he's put it wide. We certainly in this save haven't looked like getting past the quarter final. We had that brief six minutes against Eastleigh where we went 2-0 up. But nothing after that. And since then it's just been misery in the quarter finals each year. We've got a long ball up again that's headed away. Brundle brings it down for Evans, though. Gets it wide to Davis. Just hold it up. Finds Brundle. Brundle's got a man in behind, but he stopped his run too early. And the ball's cleared long. Casey mops up. Just play it safe. Back to Brown. I want it 70 yards, 80 yards. Off you go. That's good. Brundle to Coventry. Out wide to Senior. Senior on the left. Doesn't need to take him on. Just keeps possession for Treacher. Into Senior again. Can we get it across to Davis? We've done it. We're in the playoff final. Jason Davis with the goal. Senior, the utility left midfielder with the assist. And finally, we're back at Wembley for the first time since our FA Trophy final in the first season. And for the first time, we've got a real sniffer getting into the Football League here. None of the other clubs would take us. And they're going to have egg on their face as we take Dover up into the Football League. And just think if we could do it. What a turn up it would be for Dover and Guiseley to be the two promoted teams in a league that contains the likes of Hartlepool and Tranmere and Dagenham and Redbridge and things like that. It would be a fantastic achievement and I'll be more than happy to take it. Brundle with a three kick. We've got five minutes of stoppage time but we're not even worried now with a two goal lead. But that is just about that. They've got a free kick with 15 seconds to go. Scott Brown made another fantastic save and wards offside from the rebound. But we can celebrate a Wembley final. We are going to be back tomorrow for another episode in Season 4. We've got a playoff final at Wembley and it is one you do not want to miss. We'll give a huge amount of credit to the boys. And we look forward to playing Macclesfield tomorrow, who narrowly beat Dulwich Hamlet. It's probably good for us, because we've beaten Macclesfield a couple of times this year. We've been really strong against them. We'll see what's been said about the game. A younger's the worry. We've got to look at this one. And it says potentially serious here, which is a bit of a concern. Oh, he's out for three months. I'm going to have to give him a bit of encouragement. I'm so upset for the kid. He's done so well for us. If we go and have a quick look, 22 league goals this year, 21 last year. He's proven me wrong completely. I said he wasn't good enough after the first season. And I owe no player a bigger apology than him. He's been fantastic for us. That will be all from this episode. I'm completely out of energy now. So I'll save recording this one for tomorrow. Apologies again to any of you listening on headphones as I got louder and louder throughout that one. If you did enjoy the video, please put a thumbs up on it. 
Subscribe to the channel below for regular Football Manager content from this Head Coach series every Monday to Thursday at 4.30pm. Make sure you're back at 4.30 tomorrow for the playoff final against Macclesfield. A big thanks for watching this episode and I'll see you tomorrow.